Okay, so in this video uh, we will move on to energy conversion uh, not only in linear systems but also in uh, rotational uh, systems. So let's you know do a quick review uh, about the mechanical uh, systems in linear motion and rotational motion. In linear motion, as you know, the power okay that is in uh, watts. So the power is equal to force times this is velocity. Again, this is meter per second, and this is Newton, and or it can be written as like force times the derivative of the position, and it just gives you the watt. And if you integrate the watt over uh, time in seconds, you have watt seconds, which is equal to one watt second is equal to one joule. Okay, and in rotational systems, you know, I will just show you the uh, analogy between the linear and rotational systems. We still have the power, but instead of force, we have the torque, right? So torque is uh, Newton time meters. And in terms of, you know, meter per second, we have radian per second. Again, radian is like a constant. So this is like uh, as a frequency. So it, its unit can be think as like one over seconds or radian per second again we have newton times meter divided by seconds here we have newton times meter per second again that is power uh, that is watts the output and that is watts and if you think about the uh, in, uh, derivative term in, instead of taking the position displacement like delta x like um, some uh, linear uh, displacement what you are thinking is like rotation so the omega again as you know it uh, the speed is equal to oops, not phi d theta over dt okay the change of the position with respect to time gives you the rotational speed okay so we have those relations so instead of force we use torque instead of linear speed we use radian per second and again, if you integrate it over time, if you integrate it over time, then you get rid of those dt term. And what you obtain is force times displacement. So if you are pushing something over some distance, if you integrate it either from time or you can integrate it over position. So at the end of the day, what you obtain is joules. Okay, so joules is the energy, watts is the power. And again, if you think the same way in the rotational system, so we are still integrating that term and that we get rid of that over dt after the integral term. And it is similar to here. So how much torque that you are applying over some rotational displacements uh, that gives you the juice. Okay, so this is the mechanical side. And in the linear acceleration, of course, uh, you know it, F is equal to mass times acceleration f is equal to ma, MA and that acceleration is equal to the derivative of the velocity with respect to time so instead of meter per second the acceleration is meter per sec, uh, second square right so in the rotational acceleration it is the same thing but instead of mass okay instead of mass we have j j is the rotational inertia okay so its unit is kilogram meter square so if you have a large disk it is like um, more difficult to get it accelerated compared to the smaller uh, disk okay again in the literature you know there are some uh, calculations or mechanical calculations how you can calculate the rotational inertia of a sphere of a disk of a rectangular vice versa but at the end of the day now i have the inertia instead of mass and again instead of uh, the derivative of the linear speed i have the derivative of the rotational speed okay so again uh, this total stored kinetic energy if you remember again from physics lecture on a linear system it is one over two mass times velocity square and here the rotate uh, the stored energy in a rotational system is one over two j omega square right so those are you know the stored energy in a inductance the stored energy in a rotating body the stored energy in a linear system 
the friction vice versa they are all you know joules are the same joules watts are the same watts uh, and newtons generated by a mechanical system or electrical mechanical system they are the same units so that is uh, important so again what will happen in this system okay so in this system i have a coil again wrapped around uh, some magnetic core so it has a high permeability so it will create some uh, flux and that flux will try to pass through that system and again close the circuit and again let's assume that thing is fixed at that point but free to rotate in that direction or in other direction again if you just recall uh, what you did what we did in the previous lecture all the magnetic systems try to minimize their reluctance okay or maximize the inductance same thing so for that system once it is rotating in that angle if it moves to vertical position okay if it aligns itself like vertically it will be much easier uh, for flux to pass on because now you know they are all lined up you have the maximum area compared to a smaller let me clean that part a little bit so compared to uh, that small area that overlapping so you are increasing that area so again remember reluctance is equal to l over nu a and if that overlap area increases the overall uh, the area increases the overall inductance reduces so it will try to rotate itself in the counterclockwise direction until when so it will rotate and move in the opposite direction but now once it is in that position so now it is going away from that maximum overlap so it will be again pulled back so again if you just uh, leave that system and if it is like frictionless system it will make oscillations back and forth okay if there's some friction in that system it will you know slow down and then it will align itself with the vertical position okay so i think that is uh, intuitive for everyone and i am sure uh, you can and drive uh, that thing so how we can uh, obtain it more formally so again remember in the linear systems what we have is the magnetic energy and we are taking the derivative of that thing with respect to x and that is giving you force and in rotational systems since the movement is not in terms of displacement but it is in terms of the rotation and what we need to take the derivative with respect to angle not displacement with respect to rotation so if you just take the derivative of magnetic energy with respect to angle so if there is some change in that magnetic energy or if you put it that way if there is some change in the reluctance or if there is a change in the inductance with respect to rotation there will be some torque okay electromagnetic torque again you know there's some uh, negative fear because that system tries to minimize the energy so the direction that minimizes the energy has negative sign so we multiply it with my negatives so that is the convention so the positive force shows the direction that our system moves it doesn't mean automatically that the force is moving in the positive x direction or positive theta direction but the positive direction is the force that is uh, created okay so we just take the derivative with respect to uh, theta not x so again you can write the previous terms like that either uh, you can uh, use the reluctance term okay if the re reluctance is easier to achieve you can use that one but we will be using that equation more often in this course because you know it is easier to talk in electrical machines or in electrical systems uh, we like to talk in inductances resistances and that kind of thing so again if you look at that system you have 1 over 2 as usual with the linear system i square again the torque is proportional with the square of the current so applying a negative or positive current doesn't change the system to rotate in the opposite direction okay and we have the derivative of the inductance but not with respect to x but with respect to uh, rotational uh, 
displacement d theta okay so how we can get a constant rotation okay again unfortunately i don't have the animation here in the pdf version but please have a look at the uh, html version in the web browsers so you can see the animation so the idea is uh, really simple at first you excite that uh, red and uh, green coils okay so your uh, system is moving like that so once it is excited from top and bottom coils it will try to align itself so if you just keep it there okay it will again make an oscillation that will stop in the vertical direction but what you do is as it reaches to that one you are just exciting the next set of coils so now these two uh, let me show it here so at first uh, you are generating here then you are generating uh, that set okay then you are generating uh, you are exciting that third coil so it will first move to that position then once it is excite, uh, aligned you excite that one so it will move here and once it is aligned in that position you excite the number three set so it will rotate it and then afterwards you go back to number one and it just goes like that right so again you know if you think of it the analogy with that one is the mm, donkey and the carrot so you just shove the carrot and the donkey would like to catch it but you just keep uh, taking the carrot away from the donkey so again we will we will discuss that analogy quite a lot in the following weeks uh, that is the main idea of a ac motor or machine okay again you know th this is a single phase reluctance motor and please have a look at those links and in the uh, web browser uh, you can see the animations again you can first excite number four or number you know two uh, consequently then if you want a higher accuracy what you can excite is you can excite number four and three together so that it will align itself as a 45 degree then number three alone so then number two and three together and then two alone one and two together so if you can make like a like 45 uh, degrees accuracy for this case but well, actually this is the idea for uh, stepping motor so if you ever use a stepping motor in printers like 3d printers and that kind of high accuracy systems so that is the idea behind the stepping motors okay and there are some uh, reluctance motor commercial reluctance motors so instead of again uh, just using a straight uh, rotor uh, you can increase the torque by using a multiple uh, system like that so the system will align itself okay and again there are some uh, nice applications so that device is called magnet torquer okay magnet torquer uh, they are used especially in small satellites okay what you see is there are like two sets of coils one in that direction and the other one is in the other direction right and if you think how satellites align themselves in the space so yes you can use some uh, jet engines that kind of things to align and make mon maneuvers or to align your antennas with earth you know that kind of things but uh, yes some larger satellites have the you know jet propulsion and that kind of things but the fuel is limited okay if that satellite is going to stay in the space for 20 years so you don't want to run out of fuel or what you can do is there are some uh, for larger uh, systems uh, there are some uh, flywheels so there's some like inertia and there's a motor that is spinning that one so once you change the angular uh, speed of that thing that will create a torque in a specific con uh, direction yes they are used uh, the problem with that one is you know again they can create quite a large uh, force but the flywheel has to be heavy so you know in order to generate enough torque and they need to spin at like quite a large uh, rotational speed so you can have some mechanical problems bearing problems actually i think hubble uh, to the telescope the satellite uh, had some problem with the flywheel and now i think it, it lose some capacity to 
rotate in specific directions. A more reliable method is to use coils like that, like magneto torque, and because there are no moving torques, there's nothing, there's just a wrap of coil, and the idea works like this. So you excite that coil, so it's creating some magnetic field, and the earth actually has its own magnetic field, and that coil will try to align itself to the minimum reluctance position okay it's, it tries to align itself with the magnetic field so it will create like really really small uh, force maybe it will complete its rotation in a couple of days or maybe in a, in a couple of hours at at the fastest but again if your system is small and if you are not in a hurry to adjust or maybe you are just uh, correcting a few degrees then that kind of systems can be used uh, quite a lot and actually if you look closely it is you have like one coil here one coil here yes but there's actually another set of coil wrapped all around that one and it creates flux in the opposite direction so you have like three vectors so it can rotate the vector depending on the amount of current you can rotate your uh, satellite in any direction and i don't know if you know again this guy uh, this is uh, james Dyson so he is the again the founder of the Dyson company they are doing like some really expensive high performance vacuum cleaners and some people say they are also now working on an electric car and again the idea behind them again if you can click on the links you will uh, you will see the factories working and that kind of manufacturing uh, facilities the idea of that thing is the same reluctance motor that I showed to you so what you have here is a coil and here there's some uh, circular gap and that is the rotor again it is not shown here because in order to reduce the air friction they are rotating at like really really high speeds so they enclose it with like a circular system but in the magnetic system there's some uh, there's some saliency in it so it is like a rectangular form so it is uh, let me go back so it is uh, directly like that system if you look at that system so you have one coil you have a non-symmetrical magnetic material so that is uh, the same thing that we have and you, there's some uh, power electronic circuits so you are exciting those uh, coils just in time okay you turn on and off the coil so it will work as a you know piston of an internal combustion engine at specific points it's creating force then you turn it off then it makes a full rotation you excite it again so by accelerating it you can go to like really high speeds you know that is the main idea behind all the Dyson vacuum cleaners rotating at like really high speeds and you can uh, increase the suc suction of the vacuum cleaner okay so in short uh, there's nothing different in rotational systems we will discuss uh, more you know numerical uh, problems and also multiple excited systems in the next week but please this week have a uh, go back to your uh, notes and review your knowledge from the magnetic circuits and electromechanical energy conversion but in short you know all the systems try to maximize the inductance and minimize the reluctance and they want to decrease the magnetic energy and that way you know that curve moves in the vertical axis and it, it is the direction that uh, reduces the magnetic energy okay and rotational systems are no different from the linear systems just you know replace uh, the x with theta and you will obtain torque instead of uh, force okay so that's all uh, for today and you please have a look at the original presentation files from this link. Okay, thank you.